This is Bloomberg Markets. I'm John Ehrlichman. We are 30 minutes away from a decision on interest rates by the U.S. Federal Reserve. The American Central Bank expected to raise rates by 25 basis points and possibly indicate that after this long rate hiking cycle that it may be taking a pause in light of some of the economic uncertainty and banking turmoil. Ahead of that, we're looking at the TSX, S&P, and NASDAQ in positive territory. Obviously, investors have to digest what central bankers are saying, but also they have to navigate around some of that turmoil we've been highlighting. And what about the profit picture as we continue to wade through all these earnings stories? Philip Peterson is chief investment strategist at IG Wealth Management, and he joins us here in studio. Always great to see you. Great to be here. Okay, so as I said, a lot to think about these days. Um, as an investor, how do you feel about this environment? How would you characterize this environment? I characterize the environment in a state of high anxiety mm. is the way that we're thinking about it. And, and look at what happened yesterday. You had a little bit of uh, potential weakness out of another bank in the United States, and the market took a slide down 1.7% at the worst point of the day, recovering some of that by the end of the day. But that just highlights how sensitive this market is to any little bit of bad news that could set it off the rails. And how much of the market story depends on what happens with interest rates at this point? Because as we've said, there is this expectation in the market that the Fed is at the very least done, that you know they wouldn't raise rates again after today. Um, and yet everybody's talking about the fact that they're going to have to stay vigilant on the inflation front. Yeah, it's really interesting because when we look at it, we would say that everything is about what Powell says today and what is in that statement. It's how far does the Federal Reserve want to play chicken with the economy? And that is every rate increase in the United States pushes them closer to a hard landing recession. And they're, they're trying to combat that with the inflation story, which we know is going to moderate between now and the in, uh, middle of the year. But in the back half of the year, there's risk because of the month over month inflation prints, that inflation starts to tick a little bit higher. So we can see it get to three and a half by say June, and then get back up to four, four and a half. What does the Fed do in that scenario? Even though we think it's, it's going to dissipate into 2024, They've been vigilant up to this point. If they say our job's not done and keep raising rates, then I think it's worst case scenario for the U.S. So as an investor, do you have to have a few playbooks at the ready because we're not quite sure where we're going? Or is there a pretty steady eddy playbook just given the broader uncertainty? I think there's a steady eddy playbook today. And it all comes together with the fact that the U.S. economy is headed into weakness. Earnings growth is headed into weakness. We can see that with the manufacturing data. Valuation is still fairly lofty as far as the U.S. equity market is concerned. So, you know, there isn't a lot of good news to parse out of all that. Uh, it's not necessarily bad news, but you have to be a little bit more defensively minded. And so when we think about where we're going over the course of the next year, interest rates are likely headed lower. That's good for bonds. Bonds are a good offset to the potential for volatility in the equity markets. That's where investors should be trimming, or what we're doing, trimming some of our equity positions to add to fixed income. So let's say you were an investor in big tech in the U.S. or even in tech in Canada, which had a pretty strong start to the year. Those are the areas you'd be a bit more cautious. Uh, yes, there are. Uh, Obviously, they've been running the U.S. equity market since the start of the year. It's yeah. been eight stocks that's been making up the gain. So, yeah, you do need to be a little bit aware of that. And, and just don't be greedy. I think that's the key right now. They've run. That's great. But trim it back a little bit. Right? So we, don't be afraid of taking profits. And for our television audience, we had a board that, that highlighted that, that, that tech reality. Um, you, you mentioned fixed income. Uh, and gold is also on this list. L let's break that down. So... Uh, what kind of fixed income are you favoring? And then we can talk about gold after that. Sure. I think, uh, you know, the, the broad spectrum of fixed income. But if we were to favor certain areas, it would be higher quality and shorter duration. Shorter duration because this is where we can see the biggest drop in interest rates over the course of the next 12 months, as opposed to uh, the 10-year Treasury yield, where if it's sitting at a 3.4% today, 100 basis points lower, I think, is a stretch. But 100 basis points on the 2 to 5-year bond yield, absolutely, I think we're there. So uh, higher quality is where you want to be heading into economic weakness, but that doesn't mean completely ignore high yield. It's just be uh, manage the risks within it, meaning 
Again, don't be greedy. This is not the environment to be greedy, stretch for yield. It's the environment to be prudent. I think one of the things, we had a conversation earlier with the noted economist Nuriel Rabini, and he has a concern, particularly for retirees who are trying to navigate through this, and, and he, it sounds like, like you, favors some of the shorter duration bonds, uh, and he's also looking to gold. He, he's looking for things that can help you pr protect your nest egg, essentially, against this inflation story, because you already told us, like, we're not sure if we're out of the inflation woods, and, and, and that does become problematic for investors in certain investment areas if the inflation story lingers. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, where we are today. We're okay. comfortable in saying that inflation's not going back to 6 or 8%. But at the same time, we're not headed to 2% in the next three to six months. It's going to take a little bit longer to get there. And so with expectations on equities and fixed income being more modest, yeah, you do need to think about your portfolio and how you're going to generate a positive real return uh, and mitigate any potential downside over the course of the next, say, 12 to 18 months. That is balanced portfolio, leaning a little bit more towards fixed income, leaning a little bit more towards shorter duration, adding gold, which we think is undervalued, and can actually see a little bit of higher momentum from here. Can I just throw in oil before we let you go? Because the Canadian stock market has lagged the U.S. market this year in part because we don't have the same tech exposure. We do have a larger materials exposure, so that's good, I guess, if you're in some of those gold names. But energy has been a complicated one for investors, and we're seeing more weakness for oil. It is, and it's working against what we thought. We thought when OPEC came out a few weeks ago and announced cuts that that would put a floor on oil prices in around the $75 range, but likely trend closer to 85 Well, you know, today we broke below $70. Uh, I think we're going to see an additional response out of OPEC on that, that they're going to tighten up a little bit further. They're going to have to really be honest about this. And if they want to maintain that floor of 70 to $75, they're going to have to cut production. Because, again, you know, we're seeing some less than enthusiastic economic data that could weigh on oil demand in the coming 6 to 12 months.